All right, welcome to Six Scale, November 11th. Um, add yourself as attendee, please. Okay, uh, we're probably gonna have a short agenda today. Um, so first thing is just an, an announcement. I'm gonna be away next Thursday. Um, to, uh, do, I don't know if you guys wanna do what happened last time. I don't know, David, do you wanna, I can leave it up to you if you wanna host a meeting, if we have agenda items or um, what you think. I think we could skip it. Uh, okay. We let's see. Yeah, we probably won't meet again until December. Uh, yeah, let's see. Of, right, because of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think that's a problem unless we have something we need to follow up on. Uh, I think we're doing all right. Yeah, I mean the only thing is, well, with the thrush these the 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 periodic job results. So I this is what I was. I'm kind of maybe we can decide based on what we go through here. So I um so we uh, got the um where is it this pull request. So this pro pull request merged from uh from last time we want to have a I want to add a count of the number of VMIs in each phase um which you can see here um the this merged this morning um but i'm not sure it's been run yet let me just check it looks like there's a new job let's see what's the goal of that because i thought the functional test would only complete once everything reached the running phase yeah so well i what's what i was not clear to me is that i, I just want to get some clarity on like what what about like VMs that went to failed? Like I like what about like because remember we saw last week some irregularities with uh, some of these numbers, not only the the performance numbers, but just some of the uh, the API calls. There was just a lot of variation. So yeah, I wanted to see if like if it just had anything to do with the number of the the, the phases that the VMIs were in. You know, because maybe if they're all in running, then okay, then we're like, okay, well, then you know, then it kind of rules that out. Like, but to me, it just seemed like there was something weird going on. So I wanted to see if uh, if that was if that affected this at all. I think we we won't see any VMIs. Is the problem uh, because this is running after the test tears down and our exit condition tears down that namespace and everything for the functional tests. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt to add it. I'm just not sure if it's going to give you what you're hoping to see. I think uh, more likely we need to have the functional test fail if uh, VMIs unexpectedly crash or uh, don't reach a running phase. Yeah, okay, so I see, because we're gonna get, right, this is, okay. Yeah, because we're only going to get at the moment of time this audit tools run. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, let me. We need to make a change to that. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> no, it's okay. That, I I still think this is valuable regardless. Like it's good to know anyway. So I I don't think it's it's like completely. It doesn't hurt. It just gets information that may or may not be present. That's fine. On. Okay. Yeah. Then okay. Then I'm gonna. Then we're gonna need to go. Th okay. Then I'm gonna need to go through the test again and make some changes because yeah, I I wish there was a way I could get um. Like, so Marcelo, I think, ran this locally when he did this. Maybe that's what I need to do. Like, I just need to have a way to run this locally um, to see what a little bit more into what happens. So you can run it locally uh, using just make cluster up, uh, cluster sync, make cluster sync, and then running that functional test. I would just suggest uh, lowering, like, you go into the functional test and I'm sure there's some number or something for how many VMIs get created. I think it's yeah. probably like a hundred or whatever. Just make it like five and you'll be yeah. able to get a good idea of how it would execute on your laptop with similar results, just scaled down. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I, I think then maybe that needs to be the next step here then. And then we can um, just cause yeah, I think you're right. Like if this is run out well after then we're not going to get it. We're not going to get the count that I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think that kind of settles that because then I like, so I guess really this is a matter of if, if I can get any work on any progress on that before next Thursday, then we might at least have some more numbers or at least something that uh, we could learn from this and the results. 
but yeah, otherwise until then, um, this action item, we're going to, we're going to just wait until, yeah, wait till we have a little more information before we can kind of at least start defining some thresholds on some things. Okay. Did you want right. to talk about your tracing PR? Oh yeah, sure. Um, it yeah. looks fine. There's uh, some sort of build error. Uh, yeah, I'm having a problem with this because I, I'm like, to me this makes no sense. I, I'm I, so I do a I've pulled in. So when I do a, um, uh, when I try to attempt to a, a basal build, it tells me to run a Go mod vendor and uh, so update. So I sorry. do that. Whoa. And and then I get a bunch of stuff from it, and then. Um, and then I need to run a make generate again, which gets a bunch of stuff. It doesn't make any sense to me because like this to me seems wrong. Like the, what I'm replacing is actually- Sure, there's actually um, a lot that's wrong. I'm looking at the PR, um, weird. And it's still failing. Like it's not even, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's building for me locally. It's just not working. So you have some custom stuff in your environment. Uh, some custom environment variables. Like if you do a print ENV, which I wouldn't do that in front of me or on the recording because it might have something like a credential in there or something. But you probably have some uh, like custom cube vert related or um, like I can see there's a Docker uh, registry uh, related stuff. So it's... Um, Doing it's strange all that stuff. Up. Yeah, it's okay. picking up. I, I would go for my clean, man. Yeah. So here's what I would suggest, just to make all this go away. And I would suggest starting fresh with, uh, you have like two code changes in bmi.go and bm.go. Make those two changes, in a fresh like uh, branch or something. Then run uh, make generate and see what happens. You might have to run uh, make depths update as well, um, or, or at least make depths sync, I think might do it. Okay. But uh, okay. I would do it all from a clean slate because this is a mess. Yeah. Yeah. 456 files change. And a lot of these just shouldn't be changed. You're, you're right. They should not be changed at all. This is very strange. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll mess around with it. I, I figured that's what it was going to be, end up going to be. I mean, it's not even building here. I like something is just totally off. So, okay. Yeah. I'll mess around with it and see what, uh, probably starting fresh and just bring in the code and, and, uh, see what happens. Okay. Looking yeah. at Sounds your, good. uh, let me look at your, so I have one, I just noticed this. Hmm. Let me see if this will work. You have a global object for this tracer. I just realized that. Yeah. Uh, this X key function is multi-threaded. Let me let me double check this is gonna work before I Do you remember the name of the file that you hear? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> In here somewhere. Uh, it was probably. Um, trace. Utils trace. trace. No. There we go. Qvert package util trace. That's... Yeah, it's this one and then the watch that go. I think the only change is maybe. I see. This won't work the way you think it works. Uh, because this function is multi threaded. So when you have trace utils dot new trace. Uh, that for controller trace VM uh, variable gets stomped um, on because you can have multiple, this code can be executed multiple times in parallel. 
that's what I'm trying to say. So on VMI uh, or VM.go, uh, yeah, where you're creating the new new trace, that is done in a Go routine, and there's at least three threads. So when we're assigning, yeah. So let me think about that, how you would get what you're looking for here, because you want that vert control trace or VM object to follow through the execution. Um, I didn't realize there were three or multiple threads here. I saw that, oh, this is this the threadiness variable that affects yep. this? You, you okay. see exactly uh, when we start all the different Go routines, it's up in the top of the. I see. Uh -huh. Oh, an opportunity. So yeah. I, oh, OK. So I was, uh, OK, I was under the impression that of these were that the work queue is executed one, executed one at a time i guess no kind of no. so here, here's the guarantees you're given with the work queue you're guaranteed that a single vmi will only be processed by a single uh worker queue in series so one vmi can't be processed at the same time in parallel what you mm -hmm aren't guaranteed is uh, that two separate VMIs won't be processed in parallel. So that's where the threadiness comes into play. So you can okay. have multiple keys being acted on at the exact same moment, but a single key will only be acted on once in a given moment. You can't have it being acted on the same, like multiple times. I see. Okay. Give that some thoughts. Uh, it kind of sucks because what you want is to be able to have this vert controller trace object uh, be able to add steps in the execute. Yeah. Because you want to know where things are happening. If you remove that step for now, uh, because you don't actually have one in vm.go, uh yeah you do an update status hmm. yeah it should be an update status yeah yeah um mm, okay i guess if then... you remove the step you can get uh you can't get the fine granularity that you're looking for but you can at least know which key took long it's not very helpful really but you'd know when it happened so you would all be local that that trace would be local to the execute function and you wouldn't have to worry about it being a global variable Right. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'll think about it because I, I do want to, because part of this is that I expect, or at least I'd hope that eventually, you know, if there were any changes in here that people would want to add more of these steps. So I'm kind of, I kind of like part of this, I want to make sure like there's sort of a framework to do that. There's some sort of example that I'm leaving for people to do yeah. that. Um, so your options here are you can create a library that's thread safe and it would be keyed like you would uh, add a step and you would add a key to it and it would, um, this library would understand how to uh, look up a map with the key to find the right yeah. trace, so do something like that, but you'd have to add a mutex and all that stuff to it. Okay. Um, but th that's yeah, how that's I would wrap it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I had on my 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 uh my other PR. Okay. I but I was doing it for a different uh, kind of for a different reason. But yeah. Okay. I think I could just reuse some of what's there. Okay. So, that's so fine. you can have a global tracer um, object and have it. You just pass in keys to start the trace and end traces. Yeah. And internally, when this object it has some sort of map that keeps up with what's what's occurring and when it's done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I mean, I that yeah, I guess it, and that also leaves the door open for. Um, yeah, the 
Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, like, just for like, in like one of the things I was doing on the, um, the other, like, work in progress, um, piece was like I was doing the tracing by, um, I think, um, like I was taking it all over the place. Like I basically took the trace and I kind of imported it everywhere, and I added, like, I kind of, you know, with the basically they became, I basically like I created like a map with the key, just like you're saying, and just kind of moved it around. I think I, I think I moved it even outside of this function. That's why I used it or something. Okay, I'll I'll play around with this. I think um, I, I understand how this what's going on here and how to kind of get where where I want to go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. I, I should have caught that immediately. I, oh well. No, that's okay. fine. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, well, yeah, we'll make it work. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. That makes sense to me. Okay. Um. Okay, that'll give me some for that. Um, and then do you want to talk about, do you have, I added up some more comments to, to the VM pools. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about any of that or if you haven't. Oh, haven't sure. Look at yeah, it. I've been really behind on my GitHub, so I haven't seen those comments yet probably, but I have made some progress on the VM pool thing. Let me, let me pull that up. two days ago. Can a VM be owned by multiple pools? No, I cannot. Okay. I read this as, you know, figure out what pools is that? I don't know, maybe it's just the comments. Let me, let me see if this makes sense. When a VM is updated, figure out what pools manage it. Um, that comment was when we allowed this detach and attach. So it was possible, for example, you could take a VM, detach it from one pool and attach it to another. It's not possible anymore. Uh, so the comment isn't completely accurate and I will update that comment. All right. See your next comment. It's so orphan adoption and attach the same thing. Yes. Uh, this, I don't. Did you update this with like the, the removal of attach to move? I did, but let me see the terminology. If I check out my branch. Yeah, I just don't understand what an orphan is and why and what um, would we do with it's it not... and why would we track it if we don't have a patch let me see the context of this We don't need to track that anymore. That was again a part of the attach, so I can remove that. Okay. Uh, it didn't do anything today. Uh, what it would happen is, if we detached a VM, um, then this logic that you see right now would just enqueue the pool, and the pool wouldn't adopt it or anything. Uh, so it's it's kind of useless. I can I can remove that. Okay. Yeah. I okay. I just wanted to make sure because like the orphan. Because I've saw orphans in a few places, so I guess maybe they just go away. Uh, don't want to delete the deleting VMs, for example. My is running. Ooh. Yeah, I think if you do if you do a search for orphan, you'll see like there's a bunch of stuff that might have just been might have just been there back to them. 
Okay, so here's this is actually okay. This uh, area. Um, okay. So what I'm doing right here is filtering deleted VMs when I'm scaling in. So I'm trying to determine uh, how far to scale in, and I want to pick VMs when I do this random selection of VMs to scale in that aren't already in the process of being deleted. So I don't want to, uh, I want to make sure that I'm actually picking VMs that can be removed or be scaled in. Uh, otherwise, I would, uh, it would just be less efficient. So scale in would eventually occur. It would just, I might do a few iterations of scaling in rather than efficiently only targeting the ones that are eligible to be scaled in. The end result would be the same. So. Wait, are you, are you talking about are you talking about this comment or the orphan comment? Uh, the, I'm talking. Oh, I'm not even looking at your screen. Sorry. Uh, I'm talking about the line 496. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, what so was your the, explanation? The yes, yeah, <laughs> repeat it for me. Sorry. So the uh, here, let me first address the uh, orphan adoption. Uh, orphan adoption and attach. They are the same thing. I need to remove that logic. And that logic doesn't do anything to that. It won't attach it. It would just queue the pool so the attachment could occur, but attachment doesn't occur anymore. So it's just useless All right. logic. Um, line 496, are there any scenarios where we don't want to delete the deleting VMs, for example? I don't, I'm not sure I've completely followed that. Maybe so like can, um yeah yeah so like this would be like um so I, I what I'm what I what I can imagine is like well, let's say um we're scaling in some VMs were so the deletion succeeded the attempt to delete succeeded in that like we um the delete deletion timestamp ended up on the VMI so we're we're actually attempting to delete them. Um, but um, you know, what if they never get deleted for some reason? Uh, they're just they're not they're not removed. And then we do, you know, let's say and let's you know say like we do another scale in, and we and we now have these like ones with deletion timestamps. Do we just keep deleting them? And kind of the, the state I'm wondering is like, can we get in this place where like we just keep deleting the same VMs and they never get deleted? No, it would be considered a pending delete. So I, I'd have to look directly at the logic to be certain. We're not going to get in a state where uh, let's let's come up with a hypothetical scenario. We have a replica count of ten. Uh, we remove it down to nine, mm -hmm. and that VM that's getting deleted is just stuck with the deletion timestamp, um, and it's just not going away for whatever reason. If you then scale down to eight, a different VM is going to be picked to be deleted. We aren't going to get stuck on that first one. It's going to continue to try to scale in. Uh, we aren't going to force delete anything. It's just if a VM won't delete, then that's just kind of a, I, that's just the way it is. So okay. there, that's a, that's yeah, a no, little that's... bit more complex topic. I can tell you why it would be that way. So no, that's, so, a, that's okay. Yeah. That's kind of what I was looking for is that I, okay. So like when I, I wanted to make sure, because like, if we're, if we, if we keep deleting, if we keep deleting the same VM, that's, that's the, I think the case we want to avoid. It's like, we just don't want to like keep trying to delete the same one like over and over again and saying like, Hey, we're, we're scaling in um, when we're actually not scaling in. <laughs> Because we're like we're because we keep filtering for these deleted VMs and, and when they're actually um, when they're actually there's whatever they're just not being deleted for whatever reason we let the user clean them up. Okay, I, it sounds like then my my concern is like so you, you know it's like when you filter for deleted VMs, you're not going to get in return ones that are have necessarily deleted timestamps on them already. As the selection mechanism for what VMs we can scale in, we are filtering out the ones that are already deleted because those are already in the process of being scaled in. So it's just to ensure that we only perform the action of deleting a VM on VMs that haven't already been deleted. Okay. 
Okay, that makes sense to me then. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we avoid that case. Okay, cool. So here's the other thing. So if you look the line right under that, uh, that'd be line uh, 498. I don't know. <laughs> uh, when I'm coming up with the count of how many we need to remove, how many VMs we need to remove, scaling, I'm uh, counting the ones that are already being deleted in that count. So we're, we're always going to be accurately scaling. It's not like if a VM takes a really long time to scale in, it's not going to cause anything wonky. It's just going to mean that we're, we know we're attempting to scale in, but it's just taking some time for that to happen. And if we scale in further, then it's just going to be in addition to that. It's not going to uh, cause us to like overshoot scale in or overshoot scale out or anything like that. We're always understand what the declared state is, understand what's currently in action. So if the VM is being created or if it's in that process of being deleted and take that into account when we decide what actions need to occur next. So in my hypothetical scenario where we had uh, a VM pool size 10, we went down to size nine. So we have one VM that's in deletion and it's just not going away. And then we go down to 10, I'm sorry, we go down to eight. What we have is one that's already processed, we know, and we're filtering that one out because it already exists. We're accounting for that and the count that we need to understand how many to remove. And that means that there's only one left to remove to get down to eight. It was a lot of okay. talk. I lost myself in all that. But uh, I follow you. No, I get it. Okay. I, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I get it. That's that's what I was. That's what I was hoping for. Okay, that that makes sense to me because then we're that that's to me follows like the principles that we would expect. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that, we're not overshooting sure. or undershooting in any way. That's the biggest thing. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we won't get into this thing. Good. 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 Okay. All right. I can resolve this, or oh, I don't think I can. But okay, we, you can ignore that. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's all I had for now. I haven't, I'm still like making my through the, through this file. I think I've got, I think I stopped at about 496. I think that's where I stopped. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really tedious. Um, yeah. And if you're wanting to just understand the general behavior of how things work and stuff like that, the functional test exercises some of these edge cases and things like that. So the file and tests, the test directory. Uh, is a good resource, I guess, just to, to, to see how this is exercised. Okay. okay, yeah, well, I'll keep reviewing it a little bit of time. Yeah, thanks. This is gonna take sure. a while to get in. I think it's gonna be super useful. And uh, as soon as we get this PR merged, then we can start layering in all the kind of more interesting options that we came up with, like the uh, secret uh, generation. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, all that. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. I don't, I don't think I have anything else then. Um, all right. All right. All right, guys. Any other all right. Topics? Thank you. No, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Well, and then, you know, David, I'll leave to you decide whatever. Um, I'll mark it here, whatever as, um, um, but then if you, if you decide to do nothing, you send out an email. Um, and then I guess one thing I'll do to follow, I'm going to make sure that our time is correct since how you let me know that, that, that our time might be a little off. So I'm going to, I'll get with Chris and get that, that sorted. But you sent David, send an email if you decide that, you know, whatever, whatever ends up being the case for a meeting or not. Okay. That's good. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks guys. Talk to you All later. Right. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. You too.